heavy as the head that wears the hamburger. It's going to be the king. Okay, people, welcome back to another play day. The most wonderful day of the year. I love play days. They don't come around often enough. And that's not me saying, I don't get enough stuff in my P.O. box. You should send more stuff. That's more me I, trying to find time to do the customizing I want to do. Because I love all the stuff I get, but I also love customizing. It's just, you know, getting sat down and getting to work, finding the inspiration. But once it hits, like it just piles on. You start thinking, oh, I want to do this, 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 and this, and then you're doing six projects at the same time, which is never good because you can't focus on one, or at least I can't. <laughs> Therefore, I stop all six going, I can't finish them. I'm going nowhere with these. But that's just me. There are people out there way more motivated, way more creative, way more talented than I am, just making stuff, showing stuff, taking pictures, selling stuff. Yeah, and that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at some of that. And if you like any of it, all the links are in the description below. Go show them some love. Go spend some money. Go get you some cool stuff. Starting off to get them out of the way, some of my tweaks and customs and things I've been putting together recently. I got a second flint, and my first thought was, let's try to do something with the vest thing. So what I did was heat it up, pop the arms, and then pulled the vest off, which is very, very tight around the waist here, but it does come off. And then what I did was cut out all the little armor plate parts. This was coming up over the chest. There was pieces over here, and then on the back, they were sticking out and coming around and it made it very stiff all the way around. And you can see that it's still kind of rough in places. That's because I walked out to my porch 30 minutes ago and it had been delivered and I thought, you know what? Let's get this in the play day. But the shells on the straps coming down are, they're not their own separate piece. They're part of the sculpt, but they were separated from the straps on the ends. They do a nice job of hiding the rough spots because you can get under them a bit and cut there. Not so much on the back. I got to get in there and clean that up because it's just wham right in your face. And I like this a lot better. It exposes more of the uniform underneath. It's more of a classic look because he just had the straps and it's not so bulky. It thins them out a bit. The best thing you can ab crunch now. That was half ab crunch, half finger popping. I'm getting old. Shut up. It feels more free. You can get into more poses. Flint, you lost your head. It's more action-y. That's way better than it was before. And really all I did was take a pair of snips. Next up, I had done a custom like this with a Spider-Man body, the original Darth Maul head, but my paint job was kind of rough. So as soon as they announced the shirtless Darth Maul in the 50th anniversary Lucasfilm line, I thought, oh, that'll go on the Hero Masher's legs nicely. Now it's not completely accurate. The legs are big. He doesn't have the collar piece and the gloves. I cut across that Darth Maul body, merged it with this. Now it is kind of thick front to back, and I've tried to fill it in a little bit, but it's very rough. I had to do a little bit more dremeling behind this piece right here, try to get the torso forward. But for my purposes, that's not bad at all. It's essentially what I had, but looks way better because this Black Series Darth Maul head they put on this new figure, ooh, 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 that is pretty. And yeah, he's missing the black on the hands. I'll have to paint that eventually. But I figure by the time I actually do that, Hasbro will announce an official one. So again, this is just placeholder. This is just having fun. Plus that gave me an excuse to mess around with the legs of that figure, which is the original Darth Maul legs. This figure, that figure, any figure that uses these legs has always had the problem of not being able to get the legs very close together. They're usually about right here. So I got to take it apart, do some dremeling, do some grinding, very, very rough, but I wanted to see where it could go. And I got them to about right here where you could stand them straight up. So I may take my second mall. Yes, I already replaced that shirtless mall because I gotta have that in the collection too. So I may mess with that where he can stand straight up and down, more in a neutral pose. And while I was customizing that mall, I might as well customize the Kyrkanos in the same wave, right? There's nothing super wrong with the Kyrkanos that we got. And yes, again, I've already replaced this one too, damn it. But the big thing is that the sleeves weren't black like the original comic design and it didn't have gauntlets. So I took one of the episode nine, I guess, Sith Troopers, popped the arms on both figures, swapped them, 
and then swap the hands back. The Sith Trooper has butterfly joints, so they soften up. You can pull those arms out. On Kyrkanos, the Royal Guard, you gotta heat the ever-living hell out of the torso to get those arms to pop, but they eventually will. And while this isn't super comic accurate, well, the whole figure's not really super comic accurate, this definitely works. It gives me some black sleeve, it gives me a little bit of extra armor, the shoulder pads are back, but the big thing is the gauntlets. If you get up super close, the Sith Trooper armor has that texture to it, those lines that don't really match up with the Kyrkanos armor, but you get back, it's standing on the shelf. I don't know, it makes it feel a bit more tactical. Yeah, I like this look overall better. I feel like it looks better, or it makes me happier. How's that? That's that's the biggie here. I featured my custom Marvel Legends X-Men Reavers Reese in a previous play day. It's essentially gung-ho from the G.I. Joe Classified series line with the Reese head that came with Skullbuster, and then the arms from a McFarlane Toys Fortnite figure that I can never remember the name of. Again, not 100% comic accurate, it, but I like the look of it. It adds some cybernetics, some robot to it, while definitely fitting in with my X-Men display. But that left me with the rest of that Fortnite figure and then the G.I. Joe gung-ho arms. And I think I've teased this before, but there's progress. I gotta have a bone breaker, right? This is still very much work in progress, but I can't help myself. I got this far. I, I wanted to show it. It's a play day. I'm playing. I want something to go back here. I maybe a huge weapon, some kind of launcher, or an engine block that covers uh, or something. Also here, I need something to stand up or some kind of weapon thing. But there's the McFarlane Fortnite torso, the arms from Gung Ho. The shoulder sockets were way too deep for the pegs on these arms, so I had to build a new socket out of <laughs> good old OD epoxy. If you did any customizing in the late 90s, early 2000s, you used OD. And it's been 20 years since I've used it. I've forgotten how much it smells like Fritos. I've also forgot how quick it dries. If you want something that sets up in like 10, 15, 20 minutes, go to the Lowe's or hardware store. I just packed the sockets, put some oil on the pegs of this, stuck them in, and then it, you're left with an arm socket. The head is a magneto with the hair pulled off, or the helmet, I can't remember. The hair is from Punk Storm. The sunglasses are Mezco Blade, I think. Body, with the treads and everything, is an old G.I. Joe tank of some kind. I don't know, I got it on eBay. It didn't have anything but this. And then there's brackets from Lowe's, just to get the body up off the tank. That also brought up the problem of this. I'm trying to figure out the best way to hide this emptiness here and then seal this down. But yeah, like I said, work in progress, but really, I could put this on the shelf now, and I probably will, and then forget completely about it for years, and then come back, finish it, and that's when Marvel Legends Bonebreaker comes out. I think it was a live stream a couple of months ago that somebody mentioned that AliExpress had a maskless Mandalorian Din Djarin, and I went and looked, and I had to order it. I'll be damned if this thing doesn't look fantastic. It's almost Nada Studios or Noda Studios or some of those other import companies. I don't know if the AliExpress seller has a connection there or something, but this looks good. It's not perfect, of course, but it is better than the <laughs> maskless version we got from Hasbro. There's a neck piece to it, and it doesn't articulate between the neck piece and the head. It's sealed together somehow. And this is the Black Series Target Mandalorian with the mud horn on here, the removable helmet. I heated it up, the whole neck came off with the head on it, which is good. This just popped right on the ball. Then you're left with that head. You can stick that on a mud trooper body and you kind of get Din Djarin in disguise. Comparing these two heads, which one looks closer? I loved you in Conan the Barbarian! And even though the custom head looks smaller, I've been afraid to actually push the head down onto it. It's wider, I think. I I don't want to scratch across it. <laughs> that looks too good. I ain't messing it up. And now I need a Mayfield head. Or Hasbro just needs to release this body with the tank driver helmet in this color. Or was it more green in the Mandalorian? Either way, release this helmet head, Din Djarin head, Mayfield head. I'd buy three or four or five. I was tagged in an Instagram post recently and when I went to look, it was D Blake makes on Instagram, D Blake makes at gmail.com. And the post had said, I'm sending a package to Robo for a play day. And I thought, hell yeah, I get to play this something on a play day. What caught my eye at first, it was the signs. They are just so bright and colorful. They're 3D printed and then he paints them with enamel paint, clear coats them. You can see the print marks there, but ooh, that's smooth. There's a thickness to it, and 
I can put this up on the shelf or on the wall, something. X-Men, Spider-Man. Just look how bright the yellow is. The Marvel logo. And the way these were packed was awesome too. There was no chance it was gonna break. It was taped to the cardboard. It's in these baggies that's apparently childproof and I'll open it someday. Fatality. But you knew what was gonna catch my eye. The older Foosh logo, all in white. And then this fade from blue to silver. That looks cool. I'm definitely gonna have to hang this up somewhere. Catch you on the foosh. But there's also these tendrils that I'm interested in seeing. Some venom goo. Can't call it that. Oh, what am I seeing here? There's a metal loop on the end. Is it flexy? It is flexy. It says the loop goes around the hand pegs. Oh yeah, look at that. That's nifty. I wanna eat your brain. Definitely not a turd in the wind. And then we've got Oh, some chain going on. Silver chain has a wire running through it. It's locked on right there. It's twisted around. It's not just gonna unravel. But you can put this any direction you want. I'm gonna have to get a Ghost Rider. Do I have a Ghost Rider open? Oh, I do. Spirit of Vengeance. My Ghost Rider voice is the same as Venom. <laughs> that is damn spiffy. Here is a wooden training dummy. I've seen these in movies before. I, I don't know what they're called. They're always practicing their fighting on it. This is from Critically Honest on Instagram. It's nicely weathered for this scale. The ends are burnt, the age coming down, but especially the rope tied around the top. In 112 scale, that would seem like a big heavy rope. Because you can see it scales perfectly and this is a, a, a gi from GPS lot, again, older play day. This makes me want to set up a whole diorama type situation, but I also want a lot of different diorama situations that I haven't got to, but this is a good start. Never ending improvements to the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. I don't know if I showed it on the last play day where I weathered and dirtied up the undersuit a little bit. It's not so bright and clean. It feels more Boba Fettish. Boba fetish. But today is about the new cloth cape that I got from Josh's Custom Capes on Etsy. The little cape that came on it was a plastic piece. It was rubbery and it hung nice, but it didn't really do anything. So I cut that off. I kind of hollowed it out and then glued this one on. Josh actually says to pop the neck off and then stuff this a little under the rubber overlay, put the neck back on and it'll hold itself on. But I'm impatient. I just went gloop. And with this, I can have some flow to it. It can go out and around, or I can stuff it all under the arm, make it look natural like the uh, the plastic one that came with it, get it under the jetpack a little bit. There's options here. And when it comes to my figures, I always want options. For the price of this figure, it should have been a lot closer than it was. But for me, it's just fun tweaking things like this. You gotta heat up the helmet, get it flattened back out, dirty it up a bit, cloth cape. I just have too much fun doing stuff like this. I don't know, that's part of the hobby for me. One of the out of the blue boxes I got recently was from TGC Customs. And what we have is the G.I. Joe cartoon laser rifle. There's Beachhead's uh, MRO XF7A Wasp laser pistol, which is my jam. This is right up my alley. Cobra Vipers RDT7, Duke's M32. And then the biggie that we were all looking for for a while is Roadblocks 50 Cal. And not only are these nicely printed, I also dig the paint on them. The ammo, the wear and tear, well, not really wear and tear, but some dry brushing. Give it kind of a aged, used look. G.I. Joe hands are kind of tight. Oh, look at that. Let's see what Duke's gun. Try not to get too crazy with it because that trigger guard, oh, well, <laughs> there you go. It goes on his finger. Yeah, that's not bad. Very vintage feeling. There, there, I got it in. This seems very flexible. It doesn't seem like it's gonna break if I get too crazy with it. Yeah, blasphemy. The Viper Rifle even has a Cobra logo in the stock. And I'm one of those guys that really don't mind the classified series nerfy space guns top situation, but if somebody's, well, there's quite a few people out there making more modern or more classic type G.I. Joe weapons. I don't mind those either. I'll give my figures anything and everything as long as it looks cool. And this looks cool. Another surprise box at the post office was this couch from Creeper 13 Creations. And it's kind of crazy. I can't decide if the cushions look better here or here though. I think they go here because yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's damn perfect for 112. Deadpool snug as a bug. It's some kind of softer foam wrapped in fabric. There's even feet down on the bottom. Then I dug deeper in the box and there was this. It is a beef boss throne. You have your mustard, you have your ketchup, 
stacks of stone. Bow tie, the different colors, the design etched in. This looks like a fry thing, or it's made to look like a bunch of fries where it actually looks like lumber or planks sticking up from the back of the throne. It's just a nifty, nifty design. And it's Beef Boss. You know what this means, right? You bow down before me because I am the king of everything, mother Here is a custom pirate Deadpool from Don Sawyer. Dun 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 dun. I haven't actually opened the official Marvel Legends Pirate Deadpool, but looking at it in the package or in pictures, it seems a bit restricted with the plastic robe and inner tunic and then the cape. So what Don did was make a fabric cape and a fabric tunic it stays the hell out of the way of your leg articulation or wherever you want to go. And then he changed out the feet. There were no pirate boots, but he's got, he called them Crocs in the note. Deadpool Crocs. The cape even has the frilly white in the front. The tunic's kind of torn at the sleeves. Comes around, gets out of the way. Is this a different Deadpool body? Yeah, it doesn't have that sculpted tunic on it. So he took a different Deadpool body, swapped out this hand because I think this is from the pirate Deadpool. And then so is the head because of the, well, you know, the Jolly Roger, the pirate hat, the bandana underneath. There's also the white wrap around the waist under the belt with the, the pirate buckle and the old school flint locks. Just a cool looking figure that again, <laughs> the benefits of cloth allows for all kinds of wacky posing. He also included the weapons, the cutlass, and, well, <laughs> the good old Deadpool sword, and then another flintlock. Pinky out, we have to stay proper. And now I have another Deadpool for the Deadpool shelf. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. There we go. Swords can go on there too. I've covered non-F before. He does tweaks and add-ons and covers and just little things for your Transformers figures. And I received a box recently. There is so much stuff. I'm going through it and I'm adding it to the figures as I open them up because I have a lot of Transformers still in the box. But it made me open up Starscream when I saw these rocket add-ons. I didn't realize how cool Starscream's jet mode is in Earthrise and adding these rockets instead of the big Cybertron blaster underneath, it adds just a little bit more realism. Of course, you turn it over, you see half the robot, but here, Ooh. I don't know why mine has this discolored plastic part right here though. But they just have a pin on them for the five millimeter ports. Is that what they're called? And you can leave it on even in robot mode and it adds just a little pizzazz to it. But that's not all. There's also the add-ons for uh, Blue Streak and Smoke Screen. I can't be the only person that's ever thought that should be Blue Streak. That should be Smoke Screen, right? Smoke color, blue, but it's not. Just better launchers for the shoulders, which in the package was this. Kind of puny, kind of open, kind of empty. This evokes what I think of when I think of smokescreen. Also a different blaster. Same basic design, just bigger and chunkier, more <laughs> intimidating, I guess. Same thing for Blue Streak, except there are rocket launchers up on the shoulders. And this feels more G1, because like smokescreen, Blue Streak had these little blaster cannons that went on the shoulders. These Oh, yeah, he's ready for war now. A war for Cybertron. No? And then the same updated, bigger, better blaster. But the biggie for me in the box was the upgrade parts for Grimlock. Very nice looking sword. It's very smooth, and you kind of put it together with the hilt being red, the blade being red, but there's also the option for an orange blade and a black hilt, and if you get both, you can swap this back and forth. There's also the less dark piece of clear plastic for the chest. The one that came on the figure, very, very dark. This one's just a little bit smoky, but if you don't like that either, there's also an option for just translucent clear, but I like just a little tint to it. There's the crown for the head. It just sits on top. It doesn't fit both ways because I guess this is thicker somewhere or something, but once you find that right direction, boom. Me Grimlock King. He also included these covers for the gap that's caused because of the transformation. You just unscrew that screw, screw this piece on. Works very, very nicely. Plastic is just slightly darker than the rest, but it being under the arm, it's not that noticeable. And the cool thing here is that it fits so nicely that you gotta kind of pop it off, slide it up, and then you can pop the hand in. Bring this down and there's a snap to it. It stays in place right there. And I'm not gonna transform this, but the biggie is he offers a set of teeth for the dino mode that is both top and bottom. I nearly said bottom and top because it's upside down. Again, slightly darker plastic, but it doesn't stand out much. You can close it up 
he doesn't have that big open gap in the front. Like I said, more non-F stuff to look at as I figure out which figures they go to and open some more Transformers and yeah, yeah, so much cool stuff. The Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Jar Jar. I didn't, well, I still don't have any problem with this figure or character. I love it. It goes up on my shelf. But then Seething Customs on Instagram sent me a repainted Jar Jar. It's subtle, but the differences are definitely noticeable. And when I started looking, I was like, oh, well, this is more screen accurate. There's nothing wrong with the stock one with the oranges and the design work on the skin. Seething just kind of made it feel more natural. Mesa are looking so much better. I still wish there was a wackier face or with a tongue hanging out. But man, seeing this... This will still go on my other shelf. This will go on my main display. It's fantastic how he took Hasbro's design work and worked on top of it, allowing that to show through and making it almost more skin-like, making the orange tones more fleshy looking. Okay, I don't need your comments. It also feels like he slightly darkened the clothing too. It's just one of those nice, nice paint jobs that makes you think, if you see it by yourself, yeah, that's what I got from Hasbro. That's what I have on my shelf at home. Oh, wait, no, it's not. And then finally, well, you can already see, <laughs> it's crazy. Bionic Kasai is a regular in the live streams. And when I got a box from him, and opened it up, I thought, well, look at this. First, I built this Lego Range Trooper, and it's crazy, and I, it wasn't intended for this. He actually painted up an Obi-Wan head that fit this body, and then there was the cloth up top, but I couldn't pass up the chance to make a bionic Gus, right? What the hell have I gotten myself into this time? You got yourself into a mech suit. That's what it is. Hey, he also included this, and it took me a second to realize this is a Power Ranger head, and then the Ant-Man body looks not completely different, but it throws your eye seeing it in green. And it looks like just a random Star Wars character that I could put over with Jackson. And I know some people hate the weird wackiness of the comic books like Jackson, but I'm just going to keep adding to that display until there's a whole crew. There's a dirtiness to it too that fits perfectly in my Star Wars display. And then I saw this in the box, a very nice drawing of Captain Foosh and Kasai, which is Bionic Kasai's original character that he's made a custom of. But then there was this, and you guys have figured out how to get my attention. You put the Foosh logo on something, or Foosh Blue on something, or the the bearded skull logo. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, holy shit, look at this! It is mostly the Gamerverse cap with the repainted shield and a Red Guardian head with some gray in the beard, and then foosh blue, white, silver all over it. I like this design. It's something I didn't even consider until I got this figure. I think I'm seeing a Halloween costume. I'm not wearing hockey pads. But I will be. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I need this shield, though. So yeah, another play day. It's always fun. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do the intro and outro after I do the actual playing. Some stuff I'm still opening up. <laughs> as I'm about to film it. It's easier just to wait till the end. But again, like I said at the first, if you see anything interesting that you'd like to buy or you need it for your shelf, all the links are in the description. The big thing I always try to push during play days is just have fun. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. You don't have to be the greatest painter or sculptor. If you're creating, then that's a beautiful thing. But if you don't have the time or you don't have the patience or you just don't want to do it, there's plenty of people out there doing it for you. And, uh, oh yeah, go look at some. Go tell them they're doing a good job or even a thumbs up or whatever platform they're using. Just, you know, let them know. The work is appreciated. Because we all have to stick together in this crazy thing or we're just, hey, hey get off me. I'm just saying, don't feel alone in your love of plastic and action figures. There's lots of us out there. So if you enjoyed this play day, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But no matter where you're watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I've tore my throat up doing several voices through here. The really, uh, I'm Venom or Ghost Rider. Uh. Those are terrible. I, I, I guess I should watch some videos of how not to tear my throat up. Gus is a little bit more harsh. I gotta get down here, but Beef Boss, oh, he's so easy. He's so hard. I, I don't love him.